the most produced tank in the history. There is obviously only one tank which can be called like that, and that's T-55. I'm Neil, and this is my review. Actually, the most produced tank is not only T-55, but T-54 as well, because they are almost the same tank. As we already know, T-54 is succeeder to T-34 and T-44, and it was designed in 1945, and at the time it was basically superior to any tank known. First production T-54 left the factory in 1946, and its design got improved over a couple of years, up until 1958. In that year, nuclear tests proved the crew in the tank have a chance to survive the explosion at the range 700 meters. Sounds good to me, to be honest, 700 is not that much if we consider nuclear bombs. Yet, it wasn't enough for Soviet army, and they wanted to create and implement new feature which should protect the crew from nuclear, biological and chemical weapons. Not only T-55 got this lovely tool, it got better engine, electric engine starter, additional fuel tank, reworked access to engine compartment, so it's even easier to fix. Chances touched the ammo as well, more shells and 18 of them were in so-called wet storage. That was idea taken from Object 140. T-55 got also new heat ammunition, which was able to penetrate 390 mm of armor. It also got multiple items improving tank visibility, like better visors or night vision. It also got a bit thicker frontal turret armor. With all the features, T-55 became way too heavy, so it got it reduced its armor on back of the turret. In 1961, Soviet army started to work on improved nuclear protection, and that is also the year when T-55A was introduced. It got anti-radiation lining made for a plastic, which could be placed on many internal parts of the tank, which could not only improve nuclear protection, but also allow the liner to catch armor fragments after successful penetration. T-55 and T-55A were upgraded multiple times over their production period and were upgraded even after, and some major upgrades. Some of these upgrades even got their own names, like Chinese Type 59, Egyptians had a Ramses II, Pakistans even now have Al Zarar, Israel's Tyran V, or Yugoslavian Eggman. And thanks to all these upgrades, which were performed and then built by different countries and even private companies, no one actually knows how many of these tanks were produced. Estimation says it is somewhere between 86 to 100,000 tanks, and there are over 60 armies, not countries, also some separate armies, using T-55s and its variations in today's world. Moving on to World of Tanks Blitz, T-55A is premium tier 9 medium tank, which, as expected, closely resembles T-54. And it not only resembles T-54, it is basically T-54 with very few and minor changes. Starting with the gun, T-54 have uh, two guns which can be used and each have its own strengths and weaknesses. One have higher DPM and gun dispersion and the other one have a better penetration. T-55 have the best of both and mix them up. The T-55 gun takes the better penetration, better DPM, better gun dispersion and even shell velocity. It is just better gun than any gun used by T-54. In comparison to other tier 9 mediums, it is rather average gun. Good and basically one of the best DPM out of the mediums in the tier is compensated by one of the worst penetration. To penetrate motion or other well armored heavies, you need to resort to heat shells and in many times even premium ammo is not enough. You might really need to find better position to fight those heavies or use circle of death if you can do so. The biggest issue on the tank is not actually rather awful penetration, it is gun depression. 5 degrees for a dynamic tank like this one is, is really limiting where and how you can fight other mediums. Peeking over the ridges is completely out of the question unless you will um, let your opponent shoot first and then take advantage of his or her reload. But if you can keep yourself on a rather flat surface, you should be good to go. And just like gun depression is the worst, aim time is no better. The worst in the class and yet 
not bad at all. This tank feels definitely more like a brawler than a sniper. And this brawler than a sniper statement is well underlined by the one of the best dispersions on the move in the tier. When I spoke about the fighting over the ridges, the T-55 shares very similar features as T-54 and that's pretty good turret armor which bounces shells very well. It have the same weak spots as any round shaped turret, so the closer you will shoot to the turret ring and point facing your gun, the easier it will be for you to penetrate the armor. If you're driving T-55 or T-54, just keep moving, it'll be harder for a red team to shoot you to your weak spots and if you will stay hull down, like on Middleburg capping C cap, then you're off to a good fight in your favor. Upper plate is 20mm thinner than on T-54, but I wouldn't consider the upper plate that much stronger on T-54 than it appears. Well, you could angle your tank so you can achieve about 250mm of effective armor, but then there are way too many places you can get hit with ease. I would re really not rely on a hull armor on this tank. Third is still good, hull is not. Lucky bounces happens of course and beat more often than on Leopard PTA, but that's that. Every skilled player will go through your hull with ease. The last aspect of the tank is mobility and that one is pretty good. It is not the rocket like a Leo, but it is fast. Top speed of 56 km an hour sounds reasonable and with enough power to weight ratio it gets there quickly. It is pretty fast tank and I really enjoy being able to quickly change positions and move around the battlefield where I am needed the most at the moment. All in all, for many this is just T-54 and for so many it is probably worse than T-54. Average players might not really feel much of the difference and for sure can't rely on the armor just like they would do on T-54. But I think it is better tank than T-54. Most of the good players already know how to handle tanks with relatively strong turret armor and good mobility. They can take advantage of better gun than T-54 and use the same mobility as additional layer of armor and in many cases they can rely on hold down positions into which they can swiftly move to. So is it worth getting one? The average player should probably skip this one and enjoy their T-54 more. Good players I think can make it working better than T-54 and the only question is if it's worth that small difference. I'd say for many just isn't. Uh, for me it is, but for many for sure it isn't. Well I think the best thing in the tier is probably MX-30 prototype, which is just harder to play, but it rewards you way much more if you are playing well, if you are playing strategically. T-55 is the second best medium in tier 9 from my point of view, and it is the most fun um, for sure. It is basically the opposite of AMX. You can be aggressive, you can cut the distance instead of increasing it, uh, it can be more close combat medium than a sniper. And while I like T-54, the T-55A is just better tank if you know what to do and how to do and I really enjoy every game playing it. Sure, loses are disappointing, but T-55A make you feel that you can do it, that you can win even in games which looks like straight loss. So yeah, um, I really like this tank and I really enjoy this tank. If you are good, you will enjoy it as well. If not, stick with T-54. It will be, it will do pretty similar, but a bit more safer with a bit worse gun. So welcome to Alpenstadt and this is not a master replay, this is not even first class replay, this is I think second class replay. But, um, I wanted to show you how fun it can be even if you are not in very favorable position and how you can manage a game even though if they are outnumbering you. As you see I'm not pushing here because there is no one who can support me. There is one sniper in the back and that's it. If I would push I would be dead, right? So I'm waiting here for someone to appear. And there we are, MX-1390. Unlucky shot, tracking him, we got 200 uh, damage spot and we bounce that shell. Well, that's from AMX, what do you expect? He can still penetrate us, 
but probably not on the move. There is D49, there he is. I expected LB uh, that SU12254 because he had the highest DPM in the game. Uh, missed this one. Bit sad. Uh, okay. Now we are getting into position when, in which we don't want to be because we can stay and be in crossfire. You can see that T54 Lightweight is trying to flank us and deal some damage. So I was like, I have to push when he will shoot that t this t t when this t34 when he shoots we want to circle him and kill him there is first shot first time i used all time actually in quite time that's pretty pretty lucky for me is it that's a lovely another shot you can see I, i'm i'm driving around two guys and i still somehow will manage to survive that Poor guy. So, so far, I probably bounced more than I dealt. No, it's like 10 damage less. But yeah, I still feel like I'm being pressured. I'm being pressured so hard. And you see, this SU want to. <laughs> he wants me dead. So I'm going to reverse. Uh, lucky me. Not unlucky me any anymore. I'm on two shots. Yeah, I'm on two shots. But I don't know what this guy is doing. He can definitely penetrate my upper plate, but yeah, so far so good. We survived this one before this one guy shoots. We remove him from the game. Now it turns to be six on three. Can we finish? No, we can't finish. T5041. He probably wanted to finish us. Uh, that AMX is still there. You see, now I have issues because I don't have a gun depression. I can't fight this position. I have to do something else. I have to go around the rock because if I would stay here he would definitely shoot me and we would be we would lose on a point they have more points and they have more caps we are five on two we can remove AMX another lucky bounce thanks to very small wiggle now he penetrated me you see he can do it and lovely HE shell for 375 means we did 3000 damage we did 800 spotting damage and we did 2,000 bounces. Lovely, lovely game. What I want to say, it is, it is really good, really good time. I, I really like it. Looks awesome, drives pretty awesome. It's pretty fun. And you see, um, in this game, uh, when I played it, I felt like um, I'm being very pressured and I can still manage to survive. Sure, some of them were for sure potatoes, some of them, maybe all of them were potatoes, but it feels so good. At the end, it feels really, really good. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game and I, ho I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do so, please subscribe to my channel and um, like the video for sure if not you know there's a dislike button as well so yeah i hope i'll see you in next video and in the meantime i wish you a great great battles and i wish you to do great ammo boxes and engine fires and so on obviously not to experience it yourself and yeah see you guys